We'll call the Scottsboro work session Monday, September 18th to order the invocation given by Gary Stewart and the Pledge of Allegiance given by myself. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for another beautiful day. We thank you for the many blessings you've given us. We ask now that you'll watch over these proceedings and they'll be pleasing in your sight. Please watch over all of us, guard, guide, and direct us, so in the end we may all come to thee. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I have one more item to tonight's work session. It's the budget amendment for the weather sirens. There's a piece of paper that was added to our back. We'll go to item number one discuss res resolution to award the fuel bid. Ms. Phillips. This is an annual bid that we do every year for the fuel. We posted one bid, mailed five bids. And received two bids. Jack Oil bid 80.089 cents above cost on 87 and 89 octane and 0.095 cents above cost on number two diesel. Petroleum Traders bid 0 0.1206 above cost on 87 and 89 octane and 0.1288 cents above cost on number two diesel. It is recommended that the bid be awarded to Jack Oil as the lowest responsible bidder. Is there any discussion? If not, we'll add it on the next week's agenda. Mm -hmm. Item number two, discuss resolution to award full bid. Ms. Phillips. This is also an annual bid. We posted one bid, mailed five bids, and received one bid from Jackson County Oil. You can see it, the results there. Um, it is recommended that the bid be awarded to Jackson County Oil. Any discussion? I posted this for last year. Um, they were a little bit higher on a few of the items, but pretty much stayed the same. Any other discussion? I will add that to next week's agenda as well. Next item, number three, discuss resolution to award the RECCOM cleaning bid. Ms. Phillips. This is for the RECCOM cleaning bid. We posted one bid, mailed eight bids, and received two bids for the annual cleaning service. B&B Cleaning LLC bid $47,819.52 per year. And Vanguard Cleaning Systems bid $32,964 per year. It is recommended that the bid be awarded to Vanguard Cleaning Systems as the lowest responsible bidder. Any discussion? Uh, Vanguard, you know where they're at? Huntsville. Huntsville. Do you know what they're asking? Uh, this averaged out to $2,747 per month. And last year it was $2,347, I believe. So that, that went up about $400 a month. The same company that has it currently. That's what I was just about to say. Any other discussion? Is that what place we're going to move on? Bonnie, I'll play for that. Yeah. We. We've we sort of put them on notice that they're awarded the bid this time. There are some, I guess greater expectations. Thank you. Anything else? Any other discussion? We'll add that on the next week's agenda as well. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, could we have these people here? If they want to visit next Monday night before we go home, so we could talk to them too. Just That's right. a lot of money. Is the reason I say uh, they need to be doing the job or, or, or not even be here. Shouldn't have to be talking about. It. I think we can do that. Just for the cleaning service? Yeah. Okay. Just, just. I know the okay. Yes. Here they came to the bit of them, but they don't part of this Mayor and Ms. Phillips, we all reach out to them. Yeah, fine. Talk to them today so she can follow up. Thank you. Next item, item number four is a discussion resolution uh, to award the pool chemical bid. Ms. Phillips. Mm -hmm. This is also an annual bid for pool chemicals. We posted one bid, mailed four bids, and received two bids. Andrews Pool Company and Duffield Aquatics both bid. See the results there. Um, it's recommended that the bid be awarded to Andrews Pool Company as the overall lowest responsible bidder. Any discussion? Is that who had it last year? <coughs> There's not any more discussion why that next week's agenda as well. Next item is to discuss the tourism grant application for the Scottsboro Barbecue Cook-Off. <coughs> Kelly Giddowens came and spoke on, on their behalf last week. And he did discuss about closing uh, two streets, correct? I believe. Yeah, it was on the inside part of the square. Okay. The inner loop, not to. <clears throat> you were here, were you? Right. Uh, that that was our understanding. Okay. Yes. Sir. Is there any discussion on on this application? They're asking for three thousand dollars. There's not, and we'll we'll put it on next week's agenda to vote on it. Next item, item number six, is to discuss the tourism grant application for the Scottsboro High School Band Boosters. You want to speak? Sure. Okay. <laughs> um, once again, uh, our students haven't had new band anymore since 2006. Um, they're going to cost us anywhere from $350 to $500 per uniform. If you count 150 students at the lowest price, that's going to be at least $52,000. We're depending on um, basically just donations for this. So we are putting on a, the reason we're um, applying for the tourism grant is we're putting on the first band competition this year, October 21st. I told you, I think last week, that we we're hoping to have 25 bands. If we average the 25 bands at 90 students per band, that's going to be 2,250 students from all over. I think we've got from three different states they're coming. Consider one supporter for each student, at least one, another 2,250. That's going to be 4,500 people here. Another thing that we're doing to promote our communities, we've contacted Hampton Inn. We've also contacted Goose Pond to bring some of these people back, giving them a free night stay at Hampton Inn and possibly a free round of golf. I haven't gotten really definite on that yet, but so that could uh, you know, possibly bring them back. Yeah. The band directors, we're giving each of them a gift bag and they're each going to have one of these in there, is what we're hoping for. So that's going to hopefully bring them back to our community, introduce them to our community and, and some people. Uh, another thing, I know we have applied for $5,500. What we would really like to focus on is our um, advertising, our advertising loan for our brochures, which have our businesses' advertisements in them. Um, of course, I think we're supposed to put the tourism grant in there as far as the city council as well in there if we are um, accepted or our application does go through. So that is going to cost us, like I said, $3,000. We 
Any, any questions? How, how many folks? I know last week I think y'all had what six? Or we eight, have six confirmed, eight. Has eight and confirmed. We have very many others that have been interested. We talked to probably another dozen bands that are asking questions, trying to get applications together, but we have six patent and confirmed. Next, next Monday night you can give us an update on that. Absolutely. Sure. Sure. See if it's increased. Okay. Does the brochure printing, is that going to be regardless of the number of bands that participate? Yes. I mean, yes. you've got to print a certain amount of brochures and do a certain amount of advertising <laughs> regardless of if you've got... Because 18 or 25 bands. That's true. That's true. I just want to clarify. Because uh, this, these are actually for, well, they're for the bands as well, but for the spectators, the people that are here. So we can't. What have about them. newspapers? Any of that? Would that be in the local? Maybe they could donate some Absolutely. space. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> that would be nice. <laughs> Down the Clarion, yeah. Maybe. Promoting the community. Yeah, the favor of you. Would you do what I love the newspaper? Absolutely. The last group only did one, and that didn't say yeah. real well with some of us. I understand that. Yes, we can. We can. And, and we've also promised, you know, the donors within the community that are donating to this that we would print them in the brochure. So that's another reason we can't cut the brochures. I understand. <laughs> Any other discussion? Thank, thank, thank you for your consideration. We'll add that on to next week's agenda as well. Go to item number seven to discuss the storm shelters. Mayor? Yes, uh, as you know, we've been in discussions with a, a local nonprofit group, and we can't disclose the location yet, but we wanted to go ahead and allocate out of this year's budget $50,000 to go towards the, the purchase of the storm shelter. And so this is. Uh, I guess a bookkeeping thing that we could allocate funds in this fiscal year because it'll be October, November when we actually uh, construct the storm shelter. Just kind of why we don't need to do a budget amendment or anything for that. That's long as you have the funds, you don't need to amend your budget. Yeah, we will. Yeah. Um, I, I, I allocate it this year, so discuss it tonight and approve it. Before the fiscal year ends, isn't that right, Rick? Yes, sir. That's what we discussed in the budget meeting. Any discussion on that on the storm shelter? <clears throat> I might add that we can't disclose the location yet because there's some paperwork that's uh, being passed around back and forth between the two entities and. And until they tell us we can announce the location, we're honoring their request. I just want to say that I'm glad that we're discussing this. It's just so. we knew going in, the paperwork would take longer than the construction. And it has. This has been four months. And you know what? And the organization has not received any of the money. <clears throat> no, no, it's just a land use agreement. Yes, yes, it's a land use agreement. Yes, sir. Correct. What, what's kind of saying about all of this is everybody in the world out here in Radio Land has a form so Every one of them got a grant to get it. We cost them a penny. But because we're bigger, we have to pay for it. We don't get any money from anybody. And that, that's just really not fair. It's almost like if you're in the city, your life is not as important as you. I don't know. I don't think we can do anything about that. It's a shame. It's the rules of the National Department of Agriculture. But they all work for somebody and we elect them somebody. So sometimes you just wonder, are we voting rights? <coughs> Any other discussion? No, we'll put it on next week's agenda as well. Go to item number eight, discuss downtown square landscaping. Mayor? Uh, there again, this is another item uh, that we're requesting 50000 to be set aside in this year's budget for the first phase of the landscaping, uh, which would 
take place in October is what we've got planned. Uh, so it's we're requesting a fifty thousand dollar appropriation in this year's budget. Any discussion on the downtown square landscape? Now we'll move it to next week's agenda as well. Go to item number nine. Discuss Willow Ranch drainage bid. Mayor. Uh, yes, as you know, we had to rebid this project. This is the drainage ditch that's will uh, go that is behind the armory. That'll be a branch that runs through uh, city property across Parks Avenue by the cemetery department building between Maples and the county jail across Burlington Street through Dr. Bradford's cornfield and. Uh, new culvert replacement down by Cloverdale Nursing Home. And uh, this project now, I'm rebuilding it and with some tweaking from LAD Environmental who did engineering, it's coming at budget. Uh, so we're requesting to uh, award the contract to CTS Excavation. You've got this information in your packet and Mr. Kimmer, as I understand, has reviewed the contract. Any discussion? No, we'll put that on next week's agenda as well. We'll go to item number 10, the budget amendment for the weather sirens. <coughs> Mayor, you want to cover that or you want Gene? I'll let Gene handle this. Uh, we discussed it the other night in the uh, budget meeting. But uh, I'll, I'll do my best. Uh, this, this came in um, just late this afternoon, so I apologize for the late notice. Uh, what we found is um, we started this last year with preventive maintenance, and, and we're running that through the fire department. So when we did it this year, they found uh, the things listed, which are six amps and six speaker drivers that were bad at various siren sites. Uh, and then the, the quote to fix that labor and parts included was $9,426. So I think we um, wanted to, I think I think maybe the body wanted to try to take that out of this, what's left of this budget, get that done as soon as possible, and I agree with that. Any discussions? Anyone have anything to add? No, I'll add. Add this on the next week's agenda as well. Yeah. We'll go to reports. Mayor? Uh, two or three things. Um, a lot of people, there's been some discussion on social media, and a lot of you have seen the new um, speeding signs or a traffic signal, what's, what's a good name for it, Ron? <laughs> suggested speed limit signs. Yeah, suggested speed limit signs. Uh, we've got two in place on Broad Street. We're uh, in the process working with the Electric Power Board, uh, Chief Dahl and Ron and them uh, coordinated this. We're going to be installing two on County Park Road, one on Porter Road, one on Woodscote Road. Uh, they should be installed this week. These devices are information tools for the for the driver. It tells them what the speed limit is, what their actual speed is. It's, it's a public relations tool. Uh, but also from the traffic safety standpoint, these, uh, they do not issue tickets. They do not have cameras. Because we've had some people want to know if they're going to get a ticket in the mail. But it does do traffic counts and it also monitors the traffic pattern and will give them information if there are certain times of day that we have more speeding motors than others in that area and so they can patrol the area better and be more uh, productive with their, their officers. So it's a good information tool for everybody. Uh, and we hope in the future we can add a few more around town as well. Uh, Clemens Road is still a hot topic with a lot of people. Uh, it's still scheduled to be let for bid in November. Uh, Josh did send some homeowners 
notice uh, they had some right of way encroachment issues that LDOT requested. They have to be removed and they have to be removed two months prior to the bid, so it may cause some heartburn, but until they're removed, we, the project won't be left for bid, and they did inform Josh they will inspect to make sure they're removed. So it's just part of the process, and then afterwards they can put their mailboxes back up if they see fit. Um, one other thing, I, interesting, um, I had gotten a notice from the USDA, and, and some of you folks that are in the woods a lot more than I know this, but uh, they're going to be doing a, another round of oral rabies vaccination for raccoons in October. Uh, apparently there's an issue in this part of the state with rabid raccoons. Did you know that, Gary? Not me. <laughs> I try to stay away from it. <laughs> but anyway, the interesting part is these packets that they drop are something I guess the rabbit, the raccoons would feed on, but they're going to be dropped by airplane and helicopter in wooded areas. And so if we see some low flying helicopters and airplanes in the next month, we'll, we'll assume they're dropping <laughs> raccoon bait. That's all I have. Ms. Butler. Uh, I mean, thank you all for being here. Ms. Smith. Uh, Ms. Stewart. Uh, I have one thing. I, uh, Will Bergman was a close personal friend of mine. He passed away this afternoon. I don't know if any of y'all had heard yet or not, but um, he worked with us there at BC, but he was also um, part of Kiwanis. Did a lot for the community and his family. Um, very well known and well respected as well. So just keep he and his family in your thoughts and prayers uh, going forward. Appreciate everybody coming out tonight and uh, see you next week. Return. That's awesome.